I'm Lucas, founder of Roofer, and in this video, I'll show you everything you need to know to start using Roofer in five minutes. So when you log into Roofer, this is the first thing you will see, a brand new workspace. It's got a list of pages on the left and the content of the selected page on the right. Now that we're here, we probably want to start by writing a query, but we need a data source. I'll use the data sources button on the left. And now I'll click here to add a data source. In here, you can select any of these databases to connect to Briefer. Now I'll go ahead and I'll select BigQuery. I'll call this my BigQuery. There we go. And now I'll upload the service account with the credentials to access that BigQuery instance. Once you select the desired credentials, you're gonna go in here, let me just hide this, and then you're gonna click save. This will save your BigQuery credentials and now we'll be able to create that BigQuery instance. There you go, that instance is online. So I'll go back to my page here and I'll call this my sales report. Now we can write a query. So we're gonna go ahead, our BigQuery is selected here already because it's the only data source that we have. And now we're able to write queries. So I'm gonna select everything from commerce dot orders. So I can press command enter or I can press the play button that was there. And then this query will run and it will give us the results that are in this table, this um, orders table. Okay, we've got some results. If I want, I can put a title in here. So I'll call this order list. And now I can create a visualization using this data. I'll just go ahead, I'll click add block and I'll click visualization. Now our query one, which is the name of our query, which is up here is already selected. So that's great. Now I'm gonna group the order date that's on the X axis so that it's grouped by month. You can change the column if you want, if you click here, but I'm not gonna do that because we want um, the orders by month. There we go. So we have the total amount and we have the sum. Okay, so now we've got our graph and we can give it a name. So I'll call this sales per month. There we go. You can also click here and hide the sidebar if you want it to be a large plot. If you need to manipulate these results, let's say you want to add some Python in here and then change some of these values. You can go in here, you can add a Python block. And now within this Python block, you can use the query one variable if you need to manipulate any of this data because that's just a data frame. So all the data in here is automatically available as a data frame in any Python blocks because this name here, this query one, is the name of your variable containing that, that data frame. I'm just gonna delete this block by clicking in this button here. And now I'm gonna drag and drop this on the other block and now we have tabs. Alternatively, you can also just click visualize and that will also create a visualization in here that you can use, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna delete this step. Okay, now that we have our first plot, I'm gonna go ahead and add a second one. So I'm gonna use a query again. And now I'm gonna use the edit with AI functionality to generate a query. So I can just click here and I can ask it to give me a list of products, products ordered, include their prices, categories, and the dates in which they were ordered. There we go. And now the AI will generate a query for us because it's got some insight on what the schema is. So we're gonna accept this. The diff looked good. We didn't have any code before. Now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna press play and we'll get a list of products ordered with their category names. Okay, it looks great. So I'm gonna call this orders by category. And now I'm gonna click visualize. And again, I'm gonna select my data frame there. That's query true. It's the thing that was up here. So query two order date looks good. Price looks good as well. That's the sum of price that I'm aggregating. I'm just gonna group that by category name right now. And finally we'll use uh, month. I think that will look good. There you go. So now we have sales broke down by category by month. So I'm gonna call this uh, sales by category. Okay. Now that we've created our first uh, few plots, we can go ahead click the dashboard selector there and we can drag and drop all the blocks that were in our notebook into the dashboard. So I'm gonna drag and drop them here. I'm gonna resize this so it looks better. I'm gonna put this one down here and I'm gonna resize it a little bit. There we go, so it fits nicely in there. And we've got a dashboard. Now all we need to do is click the save button up here. So I can click save and our dashboard will be published. So we have a dashboard that's ready to use. If you need to make changes to that, again, you can click edit 
and go into the notebook and then do any changes that you need, okay? The general idea here is that you will use the notebook to build the dashboard. The notebook is kind of the source code for the dashboard. Now, let me show you a couple of other things that might be helpful. In case you need to schedule this to update automatically, you can go up here and you can click schedules and then you can add a schedule and you can say, oh, this dashboard, this notebook, it should update every day at let's say 8 a.m. So I'm gonna go and schedule that. So now every day, by the time I get to the office, I'll be able to see an up-to-date dashboard. You can add as many schedules as you want. Cool. So we got our first dashboard. And now the last thing that we need to do is invite a few people so that they're able to see it. So I'm gonna go into users on the left corner down here. I'm gonna click here. And now I'm going to click add user. In here, you can invite people from your team to see the dashboards. Each of them will get an email with an invite and they can just click that link on that email so that they can join your workspace in Briefer. If you want to make things a little bit easier for folks, you can also go into settings and you can turn on this allow anyone at a particular domain to join. So this will be your domain. It turns out that my domain is this here, but yours can be you know, at mycompany.com or whatever. And then you just go in here and you enable that. Once you enable this, anyone that logs into Briefer using an email at yourcompany.com will automatically be invited to join your workspace. This is a quick getting started guide. I hope you liked it and we'll soon have a few more videos like this to teach you about everything that you can do in Briefer.